No, and a huge surprise. I mean, it's over a year since Liverpool lost at Anfield. And I think as Klopp admitted afterwards, they, they, they deserve to lose. They, they played a, a pretty bad game. Uh, I, I think not, not Liverpool necessarily, not Liverpool themselves, but a lot of people uh, in England probably guilty of underestimating Atalanta a little bit, who, you know, what, what they've done under Gasparini over the last few years is incredible. The, the, the players that they've, they've lost and had to replenish the way he's kind of, he's, he's, he's kept rebuilding that team and, and kept them in, in the latter stages of, of European competitions. It's, it's actually one of the, the most underrated managerial jobs in European football at the moment. Um, and, you know, you, you can see the way that, that Liverpool were almost, you know, threatened every time they gave the ball away, you know, the way, the way that Atlanta were, were cutting them open. So, yeah, it, it, it has been a... It's a slightly weird atmosphere around the club, around Liverpool the last few days, you know, obviously with the, the protest over ticket price and, and things like that. And, and, and Klopp obviously slightly concerned that, that 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 was going to feed into performances on the pitch. I don't think that's necessarily what happened tonight. I think they were just out, outplayed by by a better side who, who had a, a great night. But I think it just adds to that kind of this, this sense of like chaos and uncertainty uh, around around the club at the moment. Sam, was it a case, as Jonathan alludes to there, that... Liverpool underestimated Atalanta and perhaps we all did that kind of slight Premier League arrogance that we are the best league and, and therefore Liverpool should go and walk this competition. Yeah, look, there's no doubt that uh, the Premier League has much greater resources than clubs like Atalanta and, and even when you, you look at some of the great Italian teams that are still in the competition like Milan and Roma, Liverpool are still uh, the, the team that you would fancy Um I think the, the unusual thing about this, and, and I totally get your point about this sort of misplaced sense of English confidence that sometimes trips up our teams in, in Europe, but actually Atlanta have been on a really poor run. I mean, I, I was kind of fascinated as the goals started going in to look at how they were doing. And they, I think they've um, they've only won one of their last six league games. So perhaps it, the arrogance, if indeed there was any arrogance, let's say confidence, was, wasn't entirely misplaced. Um, as, as Jonathan mentioned, they haven't lost... Liverpool haven't lost to Anfield since February of last year. I mean, this this is a that's the astonishing part of this result. They just don't lose games at home, and certainly not that kind of margin. Um, so that's the sort of fascinating part of it, really. I I would think that it, it does feel a bit of an outlier as a result for Liverpool. I mean, they um, you know they've had a, they've had such a good season, and they're still in it. They're still in the league. I've, I, I notice a few people saying now that they should they should. Give up the second leg, play a second. Jamie Carragher said, "Play a second string and just and just go all out for the league." I mean, that is <clears throat> that is a viable argument. I mean, a club of Liverpool size can't go into a, a second leg just um, with, with no expectation of winning. So I, I I don't think that's I don't think something that Klopp will do. But um, it's an unusual result, and I think these things do happen in a season. And and Atlanta's form didn't point to it. Atalanta's form, sorry, didn't point to it. But yes, it, it's really how they recover now, and the game against Palace on Sunday becomes a becomes a really big one for them. Jonathan, just on um, Sam's point about Atalanta being on a poor run, very much their eggs are, are solely in the Europa League basket, aren't they? The same can't be said for Liverpool, who are fighting on on numerous uh, fronts. Um, we, we saw it a little bit with with Bayern Munich and Arsenal, didn't we? They're, they're out of the, the Bundesliga race, realistically. So they're going to fight in these Europe, European competitions pretty hard. Liverpool, perhaps, these, all these fixtures beginning to catch up with them. Yeah, I, I, I think what this underlines is it is so tough competing in, in all competitions, not just because of the fatigue and, you know, the, the sort of the relentless schedule, but also the different kinds of... Of games that you face there you know you could argue that there isn't really a team like Atal Atalanta who, who play like Gasparini's Atalanta do in the Premier League it's it's a, it's almost a, a kind of unfamiliar test for them and not just for Liverpool which is which is why Atalanta have gone unbeaten in in the Europa League this season a, a lot of teams have found it have found their their style very awkward to counter um you know I, I again I, I don't think that they will sack off the, the second leg at all. I mean, it's not like Liverpool don't have a, a history of overturning three goal deficits in major European <laughs> knockout ties. So you know, there there is clearly some you know some history to to be emulated there. But yeah, I, I think it does. You know, as well as going out of the FA Cup, as long as well as the the, the draw against United at the weekend, uh, you know, losing the lead of the Premier League. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's catching up with them, but I think the, this is the sort of thing that if, if you are chasing. 
down four competitions, there are going to be bumps in the road. There are going to be times when you know, results tend to pile up against you. And and it's how they deal with this kind of adversity. It's how they, de- you know, it, it's how they, the first 10 minutes go against Crystal Palace. Is there any hangover? Is there any fatigue in the legs? Or do they go at it? Or, or do they just get back on the horse? Because I think what we've seen from Klopp's Liverpool is they have this this incredible ability to to put the, the last result behind them and, and come back fresh next time. That said, Sam, is Liverpool Caesar in, in danger of unravelling? Um... <clears throat> I'm not, look, I, I can see where it's going with the with the top announcement, and with hindsight, I'm sure people will say, "Well, if your manager says sort of four or five months before the end of the season that he's he's leaving, then um, then you put yourself in a difficult position." I, I I think from Liverpool's point of view, there was no good time to announce when Klopp was going. Clearly, once they started looking at alternatives, or, or rather, his successor, the news was going to get out. So. In that way, they were stuck between a rock and a hard place, really. They had to make the announcement. Um, but I, in terms of it unravelling, I, I would... I, I, I think I'd, I'd have to... I remain unconvinced that I think they are... Um, they've always been a, a kind of... Uh, quite a volatile side in that respect. The one thing, as I'll go back to the original point, is just the home form has been so reliable. And that's why this, this is such an unusual result. Um, but no, in terms of unraveling, I, I I don't see that yet. I think they've, I think as a team they've come through much more difficult situations, you know, in particular last season, and and seem to have steadied the ship. So I, I would be surprised if that happened. 